Cheers. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Big Valley Living. My name is Michelle and I am super excited, super excited to be a part of Soup Timber 2024. This collaboration is being hosted by Leanne at Mennonite Farmhouse. She is just wonderful to bring us all together every September, Soup Timber, to do this collaboration. And there have been some amazing recipes over the years, and this year is exactly the same. So thank you for coming by my channel. And I just want to let you all know that today I'm going to be making gazpacho. Okay, gazpacho, if you don't know, is a cold soup. It's a tomato based soup. And now that it's the end of the harvest season and you might just be out of ideas to use your tomatoes, maybe you've got some cucumbers left over in the garden, some onions and some garlic and fresh herbs, this is the perfect recipe for you. And throughout the US, it has been hot, hot, hot. So this is the perfect weekend cold soup or uh, after a hot, you know, day. It's best made early in the day to enjoy that night or even to let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. It'll last for a few days in the fridge and it will not disappoint. So before we get started and I get to share with this really good recipe with you, I'd like to let you know that there are 30 channels in this collaboration and each one has brought really great recipes. So if you go visit every one of those channels, consider subscribing by the way, because we have channels that you have seen throughout the years and there are also some nice new channels that you may want to check out. On October 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern, there's going to be a live giveaway and it's going to be hosted at Leanne's channel, Mennonite Farmhouse. Make sure if you would like to have a chance at winning the grand prize of a $100 gift card, wouldn't that be handy? If you would like a chance at winning that $100 gift card, leave a thoughtful original comment at the bottom of each one of the collaborators videos after you've watched it. Let them know what you like about their recipe. If you leave a generic comment or a thumbs up or a heart, you won't be considered in the drawing because Leanne's gonna be doing a drawing on her live. There may also be other door prizes, so make sure to show up because you never know. Okay, let's get started with my video now. Okay, I have my ingredients set up here and I'm just gonna run through them real quickly. We have about uh, three to three and a half pounds of heirloom tomatoes. Now authentic recipes are going to call for aromas, but these are in season right now. I bet this one weighs about a pound but all by itself, pound and a half. So I just got multiple colors because, I, you know, whatever looked good, I got it. I'm going to use probably about half of this onion. It's a good medium to medium large Onion. So I'm going to use about half of that. I'm going to dice a little extra for garnish. Reserving the right to use two of these red bell peppers. However, I might again keep some off to the side. I'm going to use just a little tiny green bell pepper for color. That'll be fun. I'm going to use a little bit of basil. Not too much. And then I'm going to use probably, judging by the size of these garlic cloves, I'm probably going to use four to five of them. We like garlic and I'm not going to lie. And then one last thing I'm going to throw, well, salt and pepper, of course, salt and pepper to taste. But one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some ground cumin because if you don't, it just isn't smoky enough, okay? And uh, one thing I am going to omit that some recipes call for, but not all, is a, a piece of soaked bread. I don't think that's important. I'm really kind of laying off carbs and I just, I'm not going to do it. So if you want to soak a piece of bread and throw it in there, by all means, do it. So let's get to chopping. And all of this is going to end up in the Vitamix. I, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I'm going to be using the better part of um, a half of an English cucumber. You could use a gherkin, you could use a regular cucumber from the store, 
But if you did, you'd want to peel it and you'd want to take all the seeds out of it. And you know what? I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to use an English cucumber because I don't have to do any of that. Again, I'm going to save a little bit off to the side uh, for garnish, okay? And yeah, you're going to see a little bit of markings. It's organic and organic things are not always perfect looking when you get them from the store. I got to share something with you all. These are not as ripe as some tomatoes have been recently. So they're a little, I'm going to call them drier. Okay. So in this instance, I am anticipating right now that I'm going to need a little tomato juice tomorrow uh, in the morning. I'm going to let these marinate, but I do want you to see that they're just not produce This big tomato is not producing that much juice. So, you know, be prepared for something like that. A little bit of nice, fresh, organic tomato juice never hurt anybody. It'll just add to that flavor and give it that perfect consistency. Okay, now um, I have an, a lot of tomatoes in here a lot okay it is full so what I'm gonna do is just turn my Vitamix on here and I'm just gonna blitz it down a little bit so I can get everything else in now if I don't see enough juice in here I'm gonna add that tomato juice like right now Okay, so uh, I'm okay with this at this point. I want to show it to you. I am making a smooth and uh, almost liquid. I want to be able to drink this just like it's almost like a tomato smoothie. Let's go add the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> Okay, here's where you can get rid of a little aggression if you have any. Just give those a quick whap. It'll make it come out easier of the skins before we mince the garlic. I'm going to use a garlic press, even though it's going to go through the Vitamix. And remember, everybody, friends don't let friends use jarred garlic. I'm just going to put this straight in here. With this uh, device, you could actually just use it and not have to peel. But I like to get every last bit of my garlic that I can because it's nothing but flavory goodness. It's also good for us. Keeps your blood healthy keeps the vampires away too and you know it's almost Halloween so might as well kind of load up on it. I ended up using five because these aren't really the biggest cloves. 
Oh, but they do pack a punch. They smell wonderful. Okay. Okay, we're getting super full. <laughs> I didn't have to do that much, but here we are. Okay, I am I like pepper. JJ likes pepper. So we're going to get a good amount of pepper in here for some flavor. These are pretty basic flavors, but again, I like garlic. He likes garlic, so we're going for it. And then a little salt, not too much, because we can add more later. But I do want enough, this is probably about a half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon. I want enough while it sits to marinate that, it, you know, it gets enough. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy on the basil, but I am going to grab some fresh basil. And it's worth noting that before I started chopping all the vegetables today, I did go through and wash everything thoroughly. So I'm just going to break these up a little bit, throw them in. And when we're done with this, oops, hold on. What did I forget? I forgot the cumin. Boy, oh boy, we don't want to do that. Now, okay, I'm going to measure with my heart here. So I'm probably going to put in about a half. Oh, no, I'm going to put in a couple teaspoons. Who are we kidding? You guys, we like cumin so much around here that... We go through about three of these in a year. We love, love, love it. Okay, and off to the races. And then we're going to put it in a jar to marry overnight. And of course, a little taste test to make sure. Oh yeah, see? Do you see how creamy that is? I'm going to end up adding some tomato juice because while I do want a creamy consistency, I want a little bit more juice. But again, I think we might see how that goes overnight. Let me just taste it here real quick. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pepper's coming through, garlic's coming through. I think I'm going to go with a little bit more salt. Just to be sure. Oh man, that's got really good flavor and it hasn't even had a chance to get together. So this is a great batch. This is a great recipe. Okie dokie. Now you don't need a, you don't need a funnel, canning funnel, but I have them. So I'm going to use them. I got three quart jars out and they are clean. And I don't know if I'm going to need all three. I suspect I'm going to need at least two and a half. So let's just go for it, right? There we go. And put a lid on it. I didn't have to get a, a leak proof one because you know what? We're going to be enjoying this tomorrow morning. So makes a good breakfast if you think about it. Forget a smoothie. Oh darn. Okay. See, I knew I'd have just a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and put that on. And then we'll just fill this last little bit in here. Looks like I got a lot of cleanup to do, kiddos. All right. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this has like a peachy color almost because of the color of the tomatoes. It's kind of fun to see what you're going to get with, you know, each group of tomatoes that you use and produce. So anyway, it is a little thick, okay? It's a little thick. So, and you know what? Just knowing that, let's head it off right now. You get to see me making a decision on the fly. Yeah, a little bit more in there. I have to make room. See, it's a good thing I got three. Or good thing I got three of these out, isn't it? And I'll wipe these off after I get the tomato juice in there. All right. No harm in using a little organic tomato juice from the store. Just add right up to like the threads of these. You can put this in a bowl if you want, but I find that storing soups and things like that in jars in the refrigerator 
really save a lot of space and it makes it easier when you want to go in and um, serve it up as well. And you know, this is like, this is enough for us to have lunch, but if we had company, we could break out too. Okay, now in my jars, I never ever use metal utensils. I will use, um, like this is a silicone, or I'll use um, wood, you know, like bamboo, or even plastic if I have to. I prefer not to use plastic, hard plastics. Oh, look at that, change the color of it. Yeah, I'll be doing definite cleanup. But it did give it a more pink color. Okay. Oh, you guys, this is stellar. And it smells so fresh in here. It is crazy amazing. I cannot wait to enjoy this tomorrow. Again, four hours at least to chill. Don't make this right before your company comes over, okay? Or overnight is best. It keeps for two, three days if you want. I wouldn't go much more than that. Kind of like a salad. Treat it like a salad in the refrigerator. Okie dokie. Into the fridge these will go. And the taste test is going to be amazing. Okay, here we are. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I'm going to give you a few different ideas for serving this delicious soup, okay? Um, it's so refreshing. First of all, I got to tell you, it is so refreshing and it's worth putting in the refrigerator overnight. But there's just a really subtle hint of all of the different flavors here. There's no over the top flavor from anything. But I'm gonna make a celebration out of this meal. So I'm giving you some ideas that you may use and you may wanna garnish yours other ways, okay? But for serving ideas, I thought it would be fun to use bell peppers. Yes, use these as a little bowl. You can use the smaller ones like little shot glasses. You could put these in a shot glass, but I am just, uh, I'm actually gonna enjoy this out of a martini glass because hey, it's brunch in the Big Valley and I'm gonna enjoy this. So it's super healthy, it is super refreshing, and it is soup timber delicious. All right, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take one of these. And I put some shrimp out too. Why not, right? Let's make it a celebration. I picked a lime from my beautiful lime tree in the backyard. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of that in there and then put that lime off to, let's put it there. Why not, huh? Ah, it doesn't wanna stay. Let's put the lime right there. If you wish, you could put a pinch of red pepper flake for some spice in your life. I am going to drizzle just the tiniest bit of a garlic and herb olive oil that they make over there in Napa. Ooh, just right there on top. Oh my gosh. This is decadent. Decadent. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, I'm going to do a little bit of red onion. Oop, dropped it in the red pepper flake. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm and a little bit of cucumber because that's just going to be really delicious and lime zest oh my goodness mm-hmm and wasabi oh this is so good this is just for garnish a little bit of wasabi microgreens can't go wrong with that take a look Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. Are you ready? Mmm. Mm-hmm. Put those little bits on top for a little bit of crunchy flavor. And of course, I gotta dip my shrimp in there, huh? A little protein never hurt anybody. Mmm. That's a winner. So if you'd like to see more healthy recipes like this, consider subscribing to my channel and stop by every now and again. And this is the kind of food I enjoy and it's the kind of food I'd love to share with you if you've never been exposed to it or if you're just looking for new fun ideas. 
Thanks again, Leanne, at Mennonite Farmhouse for inviting me to September 2024. I hope you all enjoy not only my video, but all of the others. Have a great day, everybody. See you later, everybody. Be kind.